converted man here okay after this long intro i will be talking about this video that i found just lately this guy's journey from atheism to pantheism and what he says in the video and pointing out what if any logical fallacies he might have incurred on his journey here's the long intro hi wow what a long intro time for his video there was just a lot of preconceived ideas that I just held to that were really, really difficult to justify. One of those were was objective morality. So we're exploring whether or not any given idea can be justified. And if you can't justify an idea, then either you should be skeptical of it or you should try to find some way to justify it. But the way that you justify it itself also has to be justified. So this could be a fairly long process. And I'm, I'm, under, I'm understanding of this. That, that seems to make sense. So I need to justify uh, objective morality, assuming that's a thing. And there's various different ways to look at that. Well, what ethical system... Are we utilizing? That would be a question because depending on that will then inform me if I can or can't justify the morality to be objective. It's objective in the sense that it points to the ethics. Maybe you could look at it that way. Or maybe you could say, well, the ethics themselves are subjective. So I actually need an objective ethical system and then an objective morality that would follow. So, how do I justify that? Maybe it's simply an assertion. Maybe it's justified by an axiom or a tatiology. That could be a solution. Or you might decide that that's not good enough for some reason, and therefore you need some other justification. Great. But the system that you utilize itself should be one that you can justify. So what system are you using to arrive at the conclusions that you then arrive at. Uh, just just the existence of objective morality um, and moral realism. And another thing that was really difficult for me to justify was just the origin of logic and rationality. If you mean logic as far as the system of logic, that came from humans rationality is something that we humans develop through time thanks to evolution but if you mean the fact that things are logical or that we can make logical sense of them or that things appear to be rational at some level even if we don't quite grasp all the fundamentals just yet then I guess you're asking well why is the universe the way it is was the nature of reality. And right now, we don't have an answer for that. And that's where that question leads, is to this mystery. If the general picture, however, of a Big Bang followed by an expanding universe is correct, what happened before that? Was the universe devoid of all matter and then the matter suddenly somehow created how did that happen in many cultures the customary answer is that a god or gods created the universe out of nothing but if we wish to pursue this question courageously we must of course ask the next question where did god come from if we decide that this is an unanswerable question why not save a step and conclude that the origin of the universe is an unanswerable question or if we say that God always existed why not save a step and conclude that the universe always existed that there's no need for a creation it was always here these are not easy questions cosmology brings us face to face with the deepest mysteries with questions that were once treated only in religion and myth All these things were really, really difficult for me to to grasp within a framework of with 
without any kind of spiritualism, without any kind of divine notion uh, of any sort. There will always be questions, but there might not be answers. What is spiritual? What is divine? What is God? What is it made out of? How does it work? When? Where does it exist? How does it exist? What is it like to be that thing? You can't answer those questions. So really you're just moving the goalpost back a bit. I don't know. Must be God. Well, how do you explain God? Well, you, it's a mystery. Okay, well, as Carl Sagan said, why not save a step and be satisfied with the mystery of the universe itself? Reality being a mystery is good enough. We don't need to add another mystery to it and then pretend that that mystery solved the problem, do we? If you don't know or can't explain spiritual or supernatural or God or soul or divine then you don't really have a justification for those things either. You can't really believe that morality is real like a, a real thing without holding to something making it real like something has to make it real outside of a human mind has to be this it has to be no it doesn't have to be but this sounds an awful like an appeal to personal incredulity i can't come up with some other it can't just be humans it's gotta be something more why can't it just be humans why can't any idea or any concept be that we humans made it up? Okay, so let's view, since you're talking about morals, in this sense. The game of chess. We invented chess. Humans invented chess. You don't need a divine or spiritual anything for chess, right? We agree on what the pieces are and what the board looks like and how the pieces move and what the condition to win is. That is objective. The rules of chess are absolutely objective. Now, maybe you don't know them, but you can be taught them. You can be shown them. You might say, well, I don't like that the pawn moves this way. I'd rather it move that way. Okay, but you're not playing chess anymore if you're doing that. You're playing a game like chess, but it's not chess anymore. And you're welcome to do that if the other person agrees to do that, but you're playing a different game. And if morals are that way, then great, fine. But we would be able to lay it out in logical terms just like we do with the rules of chess, which would seem that it would need ethics of some sort being the rule book maybe but regardless it's still from humanity what's the problem with that we can all understand and agree on concepts that we made up regardless of the fact that we made it up unless of course we need a chess god for there to be chess maybe it's all the red king's dream after all for for that to be a real thing I've looked at different concepts, uh, but there is no, there's no way that something outside of our brain could make that real. Like m murder can't be wrong to a tree or to a dog or, or, or something outside of our brains. It's, it's our brains that make us uh, say that murder is wrong. And so, th so that creates a situation where we we could look at uh, morality being false, intuitively morality being emotions, or just morality being subjective. And all these notions just didn't make any sense to me because this 
despite what we really what we say we believe that there's many people that say that morality is subjective there's many people that say that morals aren't real but the way that we react to certain situations um intuitively and i'll even say emotionally in, in some instances draws us towards this notion that we just feel and we know that some things are right and some things are wrong i included all of that because i think this is the core issue that converted this individual i could be wrong of course but i can't accept that morals might be subjective therefore they're not it seems like we all have this uh, feeling inside i can't explain that therefore it's got to be a god so essentially appeals to ignorance and personal incredulity the leaving out of evolution as a guiding force for us as a species is very noticeable at least from my perspective that perfectly explains that humans have common ethical moral systems and values now whether that's built into us or some of it is and the rest of it is learned that's a question i don't have the answer to but i suspect somebody somewhere has done the science to try to address or resolve that question uh, we might need a group of people that have never been raised with other humans to see what those people would be like so we simply do not have an example of a blank slate human, at least not that I'm aware of, that we could say, okay, this is what this, this proves that people have morals built into them. That it, and and then of course, well then that's nature, okay, that's evolution. There, there is the answer. So, why is that not enough? Then, of course, we are ignoring the fact that there are sociopaths. There are humans that do not have any sense of right or wrong. They don't recognize those things. They just don't. It's not in their brain to do that. They'll mimic it, but they won't understand it or be able to conceptualize it the, the way the rest of us do. So that... That fact annihilates this whole idea that all of us are this way. And so we have an example of people that do not feel good or bad. No matter what they do or don't do or say or don't say or whatever happens around them. They, just, they don't have that emotional uh, thing in their brain. So how do you explain that? Why would God make that sort of person if morals are so important to God? And why would morals be important to God? And how is it that God helps us understand morals at all in the first place? There's more to this video, but I think it's much more of the same. And so I find myself just repeating the same points over and over again. I've listened to the rest of it, and it is just essentially, I don't understand this, I can't understand that, I don't have an explanation, I can't believe that it's this, therefore, God. Now, to me it doesn't matter whether it's a deistic God or a theistic God or whatever. We don't need the word God. We have nature, and nature doesn't need to be capitalized. We have evolution. We have the fact that brains are extraordinarily sophisticated. And we have many mysteries that we have yet to figure out. But we also have systems that we can be pretty darn sure of. The scientific method and somewhere 
alongside of that or below it or next to it would be the system of formal and informal logic. If you want a third system, you're going to have to explain how that system works. And until you or somebody presents that system, I think that we should stick with the scientific method and logic. And to summarize that, I say, we don't have any empirical evidence or repeatable test or valid and sound argument. Thus, we must be skeptical of the conclusions. Banana.